French Country Cottage, Inspired Gatherings by Courtney Allison. Courtney Allison is an author, photographer, and blogger. Her website, frenchcountrycottage.net, is filled with styles that are elegant, feminine, comfortable, and welcoming. She showcases her life through her travels, daily activities, and design ideas that are always inspiring and delightful to watch. She has also written French Country Cottage. Entertaining always begins with setting a fabulous table. In French Country Cottage, Inspired Gatherings, Courtney Allison showcases a myriad of romantic table settings for almost every occasion. Included in the book is valuable information on tablescapes that include how to create elements for a layered look, place setting information, placement of glasses, how to choose flatware, the use of different linens, the importance of lighting, especially with candles, and why you should never forget flowers. In the introduction, Courtney Allison writes, gatherings. This is a word that brings to mind something wonderful, something full of excitement, anticipation, and inspiration, usually followed with lots of laughs, special conversations, meaningful moments, and memories in the making. These inspired gatherings are usually with friends and family, whether small and intimate or full of guests and lots of energy. These things are all food for the soul. And though holiday gatherings were some of the most memorable, I also loved the simplest of get-togethers, the tailgate parties, the summer barbecues, the picnics in the sunshine. Gatherings are time when kindred souls come together to share an experience where small and big memories are made. This book provides the styling expertise to host your own French Country Cottage inspired gathering, whether in the backyard, at the beach, under an old oak tree, or in a country barn, a simple picnic, coffee by the lake, a cheese board for friends outdoors, a bistro table for two, or a long table for a formal meal. Each of these settings exhibits Allison's dreamy style for the reader to emulate. The common denominator for all of these settings are the gorgeous arrangements of seasonal flowers. Courtney's arrangements will take your breath away from spring to fall for outdoors or indoors. The book includes Allison's recipe for baked brie and elements for creating a perfect cheese board. We'll try both of these after the review. Allison says that creating ambiance is key and it is the first thing that she tries to do when planning any get together. She writes, ambiance is a layer of factors that create the mood. For example, the candles flickering at the table, the twinkling lights hanging on the tree branches, the music playing in the background, the flowers, even the crumble and the crunch of the bread as you take a bite. It is all of these sensory elements that bring your event to life and make it an experience to remember. French Country Cottage, Inspired Gatherings, by Courtney Allison. This book is 223 pages. 
It is published by Gibbs Smith and it retails for $35. This was a beautiful book. Every picture was a delight. And after my review, I was truly inspired to create a gathering, not a big get together or a formal dinner, but rather an event to create one of Allison's delightful cheese boards. Then I thought I would try to do it for less than the cost of this book. So I went to the store with about $40. Let's see what happened. So I went to two different grocery stores and headed to the cheese and bakery sections in each one. I looked for any specials. Between the two stores, I spent $12 on cheeses, $5 for the summer sausage, $6 for crackers, $5 on the bread, $8 for fruit, and $3 for a hot pepper jam. This was a grand total of $40. Then I thought, I'll just spend five more dollars on puff pastry, and I'll make baked brie. So the grand total was $45. But that's not really bad, because what I'm going to prepare fed five people and had leftovers. Puff pastry comes in sheets, and I'm going to use part of a sheet. I'll cut it into three strips, and I'll use only two. They come frozen, so I'm going to set these aside for just a little bit until they thaw just enough to become malleable. After placing one of the strips of puff pastry inside the dish, I take the brie and cut off one side of the wax. This is optional. Some people leave it, but I like to cut it off. Then I cut the wedge in half and place it on the strip that is inside the baking dish. I use a small dish for baked brie because it keeps the brie contained in case any oozes out of the puff pastry. I'll cut the second piece of pastry in half and lay it over the brie. I'm pinching the puff pastry together so that the brie is nicely blanketed inside. I place it into a preheated oven of about 375 degrees. It will cook for 30 to 45 minutes. Then I get started on the very simple hot pepper and cream cheese dip. I like this because it's sweet and spicy without being too hot. It consists of two heaping tablespoons of the hot pepper jam and two heaping tablespoons of the cream cheese. I just mix that together. This is going to be perfect with the summer sausage, the brie, or the crackers and bread for dipping. I'm going to make two cheese boards and I will use two cleaned and prepared cutting boards to serve them on. I'm just going to slice the summer sausage into not too thick, but not too thin slices. After thoroughly rinsing the fruit, I'm going to place it on a separate dish and just try to arrange it so that the color is dispersed and it looks pretty. I purchased two different types of bread. They were both freshly baked and they were only $2.50 a loaf. So I'm going to cut both of them and place them each on their own separate cutting board.
I bought a sampler tray of cheeses, which was the most economical. It contained pepper jack, gouda, a sharp cheddar, and fontina. These are all relatively mild cheeses that everyone seems to like. I just placed an assortment of cheeses along with the summer sausage, the crackers, and the breads. I just placed them on both of the cutting boards so that they would be easily accessible and displayed nicely. Now it's time to check the baked brie. It's been in the oven for just over 30 minutes. It looks perfect, so I'll take that out and place it on a hot tray. Here it is, and it was all prepared in under 45 minutes, not counting my time at the grocery store. My neighbors came over, there were five of us. They brought the champagne. It was delicious. I hope you feel inspired today, and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and if you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you did.